Hi guys, welcome back. Anyone that's new, welcome. Um, right, a little one today. I was, I was going to be doing a vase, but I'm not at the moment because I've been asked um, by one of the subscribers, uh, Jimmy. You know who he is. And he said that he's looking to do a goblet for someone for Christmas. So he asked me if I could do a goblet so he could see a bit about doing it. There's lots of them on YouTube, but he's asked me if I'd do it. So I said, yes, I will. So I've got a bit of sported beach here. Okay. Um... I think it's about 10 inches long, this one. Let me just do some measurements. Oh, glasses. Right, 10 inches, and it's 65 mil, so just over two and a half inches square. So I'm gonna just turn a goblet out of this. So I haven't turned a lot of goblets. Um, it, well, I have turned a lot of goblets. I don't turn many goblets now. It's not something I, I really do. I don't think there's anything I haven't actually turned at some time in my turning um so yeah but we're gonna have a go with this i'm gonna oh, just move that out of the way a bit oh, get this roughed rough down now i'm going to use a variety as i say you all know my, my channel is mainly about carbide and the reason being is for a lot of new turners a lot a lot of people bought my chisels and they've asked questions about them and that's why i do do what i'm i'm doing um but they, a lot of them do want to use traditional as well. And I, I, so I fully say, use both. But don't use one or the other. Use both. Learn to use both. Because there really is no difference between using them. So I, I use a little mixture of both. So you can see that you can do same sort of things with with carbide and with, with traditional. I, you know, I, I, it, it still f amazes me the, the, the attitude of people that this carbide scrapers don't use them and all that. I, I just... Don't know. For me, if if you can't get a good finish with a tool, that from in my mind, that's how can I? I have to go and go and go until I can use it properly or get a good finish with it. How can I present this tool to do better? That's the challenge to me. Not just a oh no, that's a scrape. I get rid of it. So anyway, enough waffling about that that stuff. Right, I'm gonna start roughing this down. Now, ideally for me, I would rough this down with a roughing gouge. But obviously, as I said, if you've got carbide chisels, you might not have a roughing gouge. So we'll do a little bit with both and just to show people that you can pretty much do the same. Okay. And when you're starting off square with this, I will use a square uh, carbide chisel. Let me just grab one. Uh, this one here. Right. So I will use a square carbide chisel. Now my tool rest is going to be set a little bit high because it's only just over. I'd normally have it on centre if I'm using the carbide. Um, but I'm just slightly above, but that's going to be all right. I'm going to get away with that, so that'd be all right. I'm not just going to... I'm going to be making plunge cuts. Um, it's not going to matter too much. when I've got, Once I've got all the corners knocked off, then I should start to roll it all over and come in like that. But once you've got the corners knocked off, for me personally, I think the round one's better. It gives you a lot better finish. And it, it, I know it's just roughing down, but if you can aim to get the best finish with every cut you make, then you'll find that comes natural and you'll always make good cuts and get good finishes so right face shield on and we'll start turning so i'm just going to be roughing it down at first right, let it spin up right okay so i'm just gonna i've dropped the handle slightly and it's just come in so I'm getting more like a peeling cut. So look, there's the bar rubbing. There you go. Now I'm going to take it through the actual round. Right now, that, that's just just near enough on round there. You can see with the carbide it is really quick to rough down. Right now I'll roll it over slightly.
Right, I'm going to get a couple of light passes. It's all rolled over, see? Right, now what I do for the second half of it is I use a roughing gouge. Right, I just opened my hand there just to cover the first... Just for the first few chips, it just, just covers it a bit, okay? Now then with my roughing gouge, I have my handle right down. I've got a very steep grind on it. Time. Take your time, back Lisa and forth. Lisa's getting <laughs> absolutely covered in it. Which I'll put my hand there for a minute. I'm sorry. You do look very Christmassy. Yeah, <laughs> right, so now I'm going to take just a, a gentle passing cut here. Right, up to the halfway. Okay. So now I've got to, right, I'm going to, first off, I'm going to put my uh, tenon on, this end. Right, I'm going to put my tenon down on this end, okay? Uh, right. Actually, I won't, I'll go this end. Now what did I say that was 65, so I want about 50, so... That's it, that should hold me. Right, I'm just going to sort of crack there. That's alright. That's all nice, right, there we go. So that's got my tenon on the end. I'm just going to do a little pass just to make sure that's nice and clean, right to the finish there. Right, there we go. Let's stop that and get turned around putting a chuck. Right, but what, what I wanted you to see is... Oh, let's take it out. So there's the two halves. This was done with a carbide. And this is done with a roughing gouge. Okay? So you, you can achieve the same finish with, with both. There's, I mean, if you give it to someone, they'd never know which one you've used for which half. Okay? It's just how you present that tool. If you just go in and back and forwards, you're going to get a rough, a rough finish on it. Some people are... Oh, let me take this mask off for a second. Lift it up. Some people are very blinkered on their views of carbide chisels. I don't know why. I really don't. But, uh, yeah, if they're not for you, then that's fine. Don't use them. But, right, get that in there. Now, this is going to be out quite a, quite a way, this. So, when it comes to hollowing the end, but I want to do a fairly tall goblet. I don't know what Jimmy's going to be doing, what size goblet, what sort of height or whatever he's going to be doing, but this is just what I'm choosing to do at the moment so i'm gonna now so i'm gonna change my tool rest now because i don't want this big long one i only had that in for the roughing down right okay so i'm gonna stick with the carbide first off just to get all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a little because when you're doing a goblet you want to hollow it before you start getting down to your stem don't do all the outside and then for your hollow it because it'll be It'll be wobbling all over the place. You want to keep as much, much meat here as you can and work your way down. So you start from here and work your way down. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a little bit of shaping done here so I know roughly what I'm going to do, and then I'll come in and hollow. So I'm going to put my tailstock up for the moment. Right, everything's centred. And we'll go again. Right, I'm done with the square. I don't need that no more. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with a, probably using a 9mm round carbide. So basically I'm just going to be using the box hollower. And I'm actually going to use the box hollower on this one this time. Okay. Right, I'm at cent. I'm actually a bit below centre. 
Let's come out. Right, okay, let's do some shaping. Just a little bit. Right, now, where do I want my cup to be? Right, I'm just going to judge and go about there. It might be a bit small. No, we we'll go about there. Okay, so... Rolling it over. Come down, I'm going to be bringing that right in. So, what I'm going to do at the moment is just come in here a little bit. Working off the tip. Like I say, you can, um, you can just come in and use your cut of flat like this if you want and get your shape. Uh, for me, I don't, I don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. I like to roll it over and come in. Right, now, that's just going to give you the guide. I'm going to put a slight curve over on the top. Because I actually want it to be... All that actual sort of shape on it. Not too rolled over, obviously. Right, so now I need to get in and hollow the, head, the end out. Okay, so... Take this away, make sure everything stays running through. Get that out of the way for a minute. I meant to grab a tennis ball actually on my way in, but I didn't. But never mind, we'll have other ways. Right, okay. Now I want to do a bit of following on there, so I'm going to stick with a 9mm, a bit high. Right now, we're going to take a little cut across the front first. No, I'm still too high, look at that. I'm too high for hollowing. There we are. Right, I think actually I can just clean that all off and come right down. There we go. Right, okay. Right now, this is where you can get a bit of vibration. It's mainly going to be because I'm so far out on the from the headstock there. So we've got to take this easy. Now I'm using a nine mil here. Really, I should go over to the little the little six mil, which I'm going to do in a minute. I'm just showing you at first. All right, just take your time with this. Then we're working our way to the edge. We're keeping the cut rolled over. Now, just quickly, we can do exactly the same with our spindle gouge. So if you've got your spindle gouge, you can be doing that's a bowl gouge, sorry. That's a spindle gouge. So we're going to be doing exactly the same with our spindle gouge. We just come in and the same, bring it round to the edge. As you see, I'm not doing any different. Now this is end grain, so... End grain, you're always better coming from the centre out. Right, now as you can hear, I'm getting a bit of vibration, but... Now 
that's going to happen because I'm quite a long way out here. Right, I'm going to come off the spindle gouge. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how this little six mil cutter works. So bear with me one second, guy. I'm just going to change this over. I want to see how that six mil works with doing goblets because it's what I sort of was more thinking of this chisel for for doing these sort of things. And I want to see myself because I've not used it. I've not tried this cut on this sort of thing. So let's see. Vibration is much the same on all of them, but works pretty well. down now. a little bit of a to work from the ideal is to drill a little depth hole but I don't I'm not I'm not really worried about doing that I don't tend to do that Right, that's enough of that one for now because you know, a lot of you haven't got that chisel, so I'm going back to the box follower. Right, okay, I'm back on the box follower. The 9mm round. Pull it round. Right, I've now got to start getting this side done now. Get this thickness down. I'm going to come quite thin with it, but I want to do that more, some of that on the outside. that middle there. I'll check my just check how deep that is down there. Right, so I've got a little bit to go on deck. I'm just gonna push it in now for a minute. Working right in the centre, so I'm okay to push it a bit. Right, okay. I've got my bit. I've got 
got the depth I want and now I've just got to get the inside to the shape I want it. Yep, that's all right, nice and smooth. Keep the tool rolled over. And you come round and follow the cat, take the handle round. See, my handle's right over that way when I finish. So I'm off the tip. Keep it coming off the tip all the time. Stop that vibration, see? So I've got to get a couple of clean cuts here. I've got to say, we're getting a nice clean finish on this inside here. And we'll pull up. So I've got a tiny little bump there. That's it, that's gone right, okay. I'm going to do that for the inside. So now I'm going to sand that quickly. Put a dusty pressure on. Doing the 180 grit. When you go with that first first little bit of sanding, when you can sort of find out what the finish is, whether you've got any tool marks, well I've got a tiny little dimple on that bottom. I get that little dimple. Right, let's take that away. That's it, that's gone. Right. And there's a little little ridge just there on this outer rim. Now I've got to get that before I start doing the shaping because otherwise what will happen is I'll get vibration on it like that and I won't get a clean cut. There we go, nice and clean. I'll just catch you with it. Right, let's carry on. A bit more stone just here on the edge. Yep, nice. Getting a nice finish now. Right, we're going to go down on a couple of bricks. I'm going to go down to a 
Right. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of wax on it. You've got bits all over you, darling. Oh, no. She's, sit, she's standing covered. here picking all these little bits <laughs> off of her. <laughs> you wore a lamb's wool fleece as well. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. It's all stuck in it. It's all stuck in it. Yeah. <laughs> right, there we go. We're getting a nice... Right, that's a nice finish on that. Very nice finish, actually. Right, okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit on this outside of it. But this is where, really, I should have grabbed myself a tennis ball, shouldn't I? I need to get one from outside. Yeah, they're probably going to be, I'm going to have to just bring this through there. Right, we'll stop that for a second. Right, there you go, we've got a nice, nice finish inside that. Oh. I'm going to get my head stop, my tail stop pulled up, that's it, right. Okay, now I'm going to have to find myself something that I can put in the bottom of here because I want to just support it a little bit. Right, I've got a, I've got a live centre which hasn't got any point on it and I've got some of this padding so I want to, if I can, pop that in there Bring it up to there and just put a little bit of pressure. Not there yet. There are, just a little bit. That will just help to support it when I'm turning. Because as it gets a bit thinner, it needs that little bit of support. Alright, okay. So now I'll do a bit of a uh, bit of shaping on the bowl. Right, I'm going to stick with the stick with the nine mil for the moment. That thing at the top there. Nice finish. Oops. Just lost that there for a second. There we go. Well, I'm going to start to take some of this away now. <laughs> Just jack it up there, trying to put my nose on.
So okay, you're not used to me being so quiet, are you? Because I'm concentrating, see? <laughs> some of this. Right, let's just grab another chisel. We're going to do a little bit with um, the spindle gouge. Just get rid of some of this here. And as you can see, it's the same cut. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring some of this bolt down here now. Get rid of some of it. Rather quickly. And for now I'm going to use a 15mm round chisel. You right there? Let me get this uh Right, so let's skip that. Oh that's a nice finish on that. Let me just stop this for a second. You can see what I'm sort of doing, the shape I'm coming down to here. I'm gonna have a little step, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit more, and then I'm gonna come down. I'm not going for an ultra thin stem, okay? But I mean, you can see that that's, I'm sort of roughing this with uh, with this 15 mil round. But you see, I've got a little skip back then. So a little bit on that, because I always say about all these skip backs. And as you know, it's because, especially more so when you're coming down a hill, whether you're coming downhill this way or downhill this way, is when you'll get the skip backs. And the reason I got it was because I, I didn't rub the bevel. I come off the bevel and I come in too far round and that's what happens as soon as that comes in that's what happens it wants to skip back okay if you can keep that on the bevel then it will go forward like that and it's the same with your spindle gouges okay exactly the, the same thing now i've got one here that's quite quite swept back okay now these are a nightmare the reason being it, it makes it really aggressive but it's not what it is it's harder to control that hold that bevel on now, if you can keep the bevel, if you can come in with the bevel, and if you've got a steep sweep back, you really need to come in with it, flute totally closed, or get your bevel on there, and then slowly turn, and then you can come in, and you'll get this, and you'll get this cut, okay? And you'll come in. But, if you haven't got that bevel in full contact, and now there's only a slight, I don't know whether you can even see that, there's a slightest gap there, you need to come right, right the way over. Are you seeing it? Let me see. Yeah, I think you're seeing it. Right. Now, while I'm in contact, if I just roll the chisel slightly, I can come forward and I'll get a lovely, I'd get a lovely smooth cut. But if I've got the slightest gap there, like there, look, it wants to come backwards. It don't want to go forward. It wants to come back so if i come in here and i'm not in full contact with that bevel it wants to come this way look it wants to scoop this way and that's all that's happening when you get a skip back is it's just you've not got this this rubbing and it's the same with all all the spindle gouges your bowl gouges your skew chisels 
um, when you when you write when you put a little relief bevel on, it's a little bit easier to to actually stay in contact with that with that bevel. Um, but it's the same thing. If you come too far forward, it will just want to skip back. And if you're coming down here to do this lovely little cut, and you're going to pick it up, you'll come down here. You're coming just slightly off, and you'll skip back, and you'll put a nasty mark right across the t outside of your your bit there. And then you're going to have to go back and take another finish cut. So all it is is when you're coming in, make sure close your flute, make sure you've got that bevel completely rubbing, and then just turn the tool slightly, and you'll pick up the cut there and it'll go forward, okay? Don't try and come in with your flute this way, which is what a lot will do, because the minute you touch that, it will go that way. You won't avoid it. You must close it, come in, just a slight twist, and then you can follow down. And that is exactly the same with the carbide. There is no different whatsoever. When you come in, if, if you come in with it this way, and that bevel's not on, it's look, it's going to do that exact same thing. It's always going to want to go backwards, okay? But if you can come in here, then you'll pick up that cut, and it'll be easy to go forwards, okay? Just make sure you've got that, you use the, you just present the cut right, okay? But if you come in flat with it to scrape, you won't get this sort of finish, okay? So you'll have to end up cleaning it up quite a bit. Right, let's get back to turning it off, hopefully. Sorry about that. Just thought I'd make that a bit clearer. As what, what was actually happening there? Right, I've got rid of some of the bolts so I can start sort of coming in and carry on doing a little bit of shaping here. camera bar removed, we're going to have to go back a little bit I'm afraid, unless you want to change the camera over to the other arm, oh, I'm touching the goblet now, look, I've just put a little mark on that, I've just touched it until the, gone, that's alright, okay, so I'm coming in with the, Right, that's, I think about the thickness I'm going to have this stem on this. Might go down a little bit thin, I'll see how I feel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a quick sanding because I want to finish it as I go down in stages. Because once you get that thin right down there, you're going to, you don't want to be sanding and doing things like that. So I'm going to bring this over. Lisa's moving all this stuff around. <laughs> to get that out of the way. I need to bring this dusting structure in a bit. There we go. You might want to put that camera on that one. Right, change it over. And she's just going to move the camera over. Yeah, I'm only doing a boring bit. I'm only doing a bit of sanding.
Do I do? Yeah, come in, come in, come in, do it. Sorry guys if you've been wobbled about a bit. There you go. There you go. Right, okay. I'm not going to put any finish on it yet, any wax finish. Okay guys, now I'm going to get the stem down a bit more. That's going to turn, turn down to another sort of rest. I want a small one now. Turn that off. Right, okay. in there. <laughs> That's it. Right, okay, let me just come along the way this. Still resting a little bit high.
I think this is probably going to be around about where the bottom is going to be because otherwise it's going to look silly if it's too, too big. careful but don't want to take don't doesn't matter too much if it tapers this way out but you don't want it to taper in that's the last thing you want so ideally you want it straight if you can right let me just get rid of some of this uh wood here I actually want that like that to come down. I was doing sort of a... Uh, I don't know whether I want that actually. I think I might just come straight down on that. It wasn't what I was like, it doesn't look right. Well, I was going to, but I don't think I'm going to. So I'm just going to come down and do smooth down here. Just got to keep it the finger behind it. Yeah, it's straight there. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that sort of. Yeah, we'll get a finished cut on that. That's going to be ready for sanding. I want to come in with a starting tool at the moment. Just a little bit of room there. Just got that slight, very, very slight. Okay. Right, okay, let's do a little bit of sanding. Got that stem all comes in. It's been pulled apart.
180 grit. Placed on there. How was your time? 53 minutes. Oh dear. <laughs> Jimmy might get to see the video next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. Actually, I didn't put sanding seal on that bottom bit, but I don't have to with my sanding paste. It, it does seal it, so it's not too bad. It's just my own mate, so I don't sell it. It's just for my own use. This is my own wax as well that I use. And again, I don't sell it, it's just for me. I just make my own wax up. It works for me. And it's best applied with the lathe spinning at speed. So it works best. So it suits my style of turning. Let's work it in. I just keep it going until I see it stops moving. Because you can see that you can see the wax moving as you're putting it on. Right. Go. Now I am going to put a little bit of uh, nitro crystalline on. That just helps. That puts a, a slightly harder finish on it. Okay, just a little bit. that a second and then I'll pop that last little bit off. Mm. Oh, that looks very nice. I'm not going to stop the lathe until I've actually finished. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with a parting tool and just take this down a bit. I'm going to take a bit away from the bottom. I 
fallen apart it yet. I'm just coming in and taking it down quite a way. Go to there, and what I want to do is I want to come in with my detail chisel. I'm coming with a detail chisel, and I want to just clean it and to put a slight. That's going to be that. I mean, I've got a little bit of wax on the bottom of this, but still good to get in there. But that's the bottom anyway. So right, now I'm gonna. So I'm actually going to come in with a saw for that bit. I'm not going to part that off of that bottom bit there. No, I am, because I'm going to mark the outside with the saw. So I am going to come in with a parting tool. I'm going to use the thin one. Sorry, guys. Right, OK. So I've got the pressure on still. Now, what I want to do I'm going to back the pressure off a bit. So I'm going to part this and hold it. There we go. So I'm going to stop that. Right. And that way I didn't lose nothing. Right, and all I've got is a tiny little dibble on the bottom there to take off, which you can sand that off. Or oh, what I tend to do, I have my little skew here and I can just... Take that off. Then a little bit of a sanding on that, which I should do later really. But it'll just be a little bit of a, a finish. I'll probably use the drill or something or put the sander on. But that will be... Uh, right, I need something to stand out, don't I? Right, so... There we are, guys. That's... Oh, there you go, Jim. A little goblet. I don't know what sort of size you want to do your goblet or... And that's just out of the Spotted Beach. So, hollowed out. And there we go. Little goblet. Okay. It's got quite a nice patterning on that, actually. Mm. Can I have a glass of wine? There now? we go. Uh, as I said, it's you, you can do whatever you want on them patterning wines if you want to do more little features and things but that's basically the general idea of doing a goblet get it hollowed get it finished support the end and then work and work your way down don't take don't take all the all the thickness away until you get down there right thanks for joining me guys and hope you enjoyed that one and that one's for you jim jimmy I should say jimmy <laughs> and see you in the next one toodle pip Bye, guys.